Hey, this is Jack and today I'm going to show you how to create a mobile responsive table on WordPress without any additional plugins. So if you've been following my channel, you know I don't like to add plugins with a single function because firstly, the more plugins you have, the slower your website is going to load. I'm a speed junkie. And secondly, you never know what codes are in those plugins. Not saying they are no good, but we try to avoid them as much as we can. So there are many ways to display a mobile responsive table, but I'm going to show you two methods today. The first and the most easiest is this movable table. So if you have a large data set like mine, I have six columns here. It is easy for your site visitors to move the table from left to right and it's rather simple for you to create something like this. And I will walk you through step by step on how to do this. The second way is a little complicated because it uses some CSS and JavaScript but I will try my best to explain it so you know how to use it on your WordPress site. It will look something like this. This is created from the same data set and it allows your visitors to see the data straight from a mobile scroll. It looks professional and it delivers. So whichever way you choose to display your mobile responsive table, I got you covered. Before we get started, can you do me a little favor and smash that thumbs up button? I really appreciate that. And do subscribe to the channel for more WordPress and online business tutorials. I publish about two videos per week. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm on the WordPress editor and I'm creating a new blog post and I need to import a data like this onto the WordPress editor using tables. So there are a total of seven columns here and about 11 rows if I'm not wrong. And this data were taken from one of my mission to find the fastest WordPress team. So if you're interested to know which is the fastest WordPress team for your online business, you can check out the video that is popping up on the right. But don't watch that first. I know it's a little off topic. You're here to learn how to create a mobile responsive table. So I've left a link to the speed test in the description so you can visit that later. So what we want to achieve in this video is to put this table onto the WordPress editor. And the first thing we need to do is to click on this add block. We can see it here. And if you can't see this table option, you just need to search for table and this will show. Click on that. Now for my case, I have seven columns and about 11 rows. But for your case, it might be different. And if you don't know what's the answer yet, you can just put in any numbers. You can add or delete columns or rows later on after you have created that table. I will show you how in a while. So let me create this table. So there are a total of seven columns and 11 rows here. And if you look over to the right, there is this table settings. You can add a header section. And as you toggle this, you'll see this section appear. And for example, if I want the footer section as well, if I toggle this, you'll see this appear here. And then you can play around with the styles. There are not many options. So the other option you have is just the stripes or by default, it looks like this. And if you want to play around with the colors, you can either change this background color to either of these colors. If you don't like either of these colors, you can just clear it off and it becomes white. It is not the nicest table you're going to create, but our main purpose of the table is to deliver information. So I don't think we need to focus too much on the styles. So for now, let me put this side by side and let me add the data in and then we'll work on a mobile responsive table. So let me fast forward this. Okay, so I've created this table and as you can see, we have this blank row that we didn't use. So let me delete this row. Now, all you need to do is to click on either one of the cells in this row and head over to the top where you see this edit table, click on that. And over here, you can see that you can either insert a row before. If you click on that, it will add a row before. And if you want to delete this row, you just need to click on this delete row. Or for example, if you want to add a column right after this column, all you need to do is to click on this cell where the column is, click on this, insert column after and you'll see that a new column is added so we don't need this let us delete this column and let us delete this row so we basically have this here let me show you how it looks like on mobile so let me publish this first so this is published let me copy this link and open up to show you how it looks like on mobile so this is basically how it looked like on an ipad or something similar and if I reduce the size down to how it looks like on mobile, you see that the data is being squeezed to the end. And like, for example, this a space is actually being pushed down. And by default, the table block allows you to have this movable data, which is actually very good. But let us design this a little bit to make it look nicer. So what you need to do is to go back to your WordPress dashboard under appearance, click on customize, and then go to additional CSS you want to paste this code in. And let me explain a little how does this work. Let me publish this first. 
and let's refresh this and you can see that the data is being organized quite nicely now let me try to explain to you a little bit about html codes so if we go back to the post and we click on this more options if you click on this edit html you see a bunch of codes like this now let me put everything in place first so that it's easier for me to explain So I won't complete everything, let me just explain whatever we have. So as you can see, this is the table HTML tag. This will tell your web browser that this entire block of codes here is going to be a table. And then for your table, we have the table head, which means this section over here. So as you can see, the Gutenberg block will basically squish all the HTML codes together. So it's a little tough to read all the HTML codes unless you convert the block into a HTML element. But anyway, that's the table head and TR is basically the start of the row. So every time you start something, you have to close off the row. And this is the close. So for example, you have a T head here, you close off the T head after this entire section is done. So if you have a table here, you close off the entire table. So whenever there is open, there will always be a close. Like for example, this th, there's an open and there is a close here. So this is telling the web browser that this is a row. This is the start of the row. And this is basically the column in the first row, which is this over here, this blank column over here. And then as you add a new column here, a new header, which is this th tag, this is generate press. And this is basically this cell over here. So this is TH and if you go to the customizer, you'll see that TH white space no wrap. So before that, as you can see over here, this Astra WP before we have this no wrap code, this WP is actually being squished down to the next line. And if you add this no wrap code, it will basically not push this space WP down. This is for the TH tag, which is the header tag for the table. And as for the TD, it's basically for each of the cells over here. And if you go to the HTML code, so this is what happens. You have the start of the row, which is start of the first row here. This is the first column of the first row, which is this data over here. And then you add another column within the first row here. This is the data. And this 83 is the third column of the first row. So this is the first row. And then you see here, this is the start of the second row. So basically TD can be considered a column within a row. So if you look over to the customizer, you see this TD, it basically represents all these TDs, all these columns within the rows in itself. And if there are any spacing or whatever, they will not be pushed down. So this is what it basically means. I hope this explanation is easy for you to understand because this is the basic for all table HTML and it is required for me to explain the second method of creating a mobile friendly table. So this is how you create a very simple mobile responsive table. If you need this code, I've left a link in the description for you to download. It works on any team as long as you're not using a table plugin. But if you're using a table plugin, then there might be some conflicts. The objective of this video is to create a mobile responsive table without any plugins. So that's that. Let us go to the second way of creating a mobile responsive table. And our aim is to create something like this, where each table row is being converted into an individual column as you can see on screen. So now let me show you the second way to create a mobile responsive table. And the first thing we need to do is to remove the additional CSS here and we'll replace it with something like this. Now don't worry, I know it's a little intimidating, but let me try my best to explain this in a while. And I've placed a link in the description for you to download this code. But let me first share with you what you need to do to use these codes. Now let me publish this first, and let me show you what changes have we done to this table. So let me refresh this. So now instead of a horizontal table, each row is now converted into a column. So basically this is the first row, this is the second row, and this is the third row and so forth, all the way to T number 10. And we have the average here. And this is not exactly what we want. As I've showed you earlier, we want something like this. So this is what you need to do on your WordPress editor. Let's go to the post where we have all the data here. And then let's click on anywhere within the table. And we want to select more options and edit as HTML. 
So first thing you need to do for every TD, starting with the data, for example, this 94, which is over here, we want to add generate press here to show that this 94 belongs to generate press. And then on the second line, we want to add extra WP because this data refers to extra WP on test number one. And the third goes to Bloxy and Cadence and so on and so forth. So what we need to do is to go to this column within the first row, which is this 94 over here. Within this TD, we want to space and add a line of text like this. Let me hit enter so it's easier for you to see. So as you can see here, this is the data for the first row. It starts with TR, which is the table row and ends with the table row here. And within the table row, we have the first column, which is this T1. And then the second column is this. We want to add a data heading equals to generate press, which is this data over here. We want to add a generate press here. And that's why we are doing this. So on the second line, we want to add this and we want to put this as extra WP. On the third row, we want to add Bloxy. The fourth is Cadence. Fifth is Neve. And finally, we have Ocean WP. So as we save this, you'll see something like this, but don't worry because the Gutenberg blog don't recognize this code. So it's much easier for us to edit this as HTML instead of a blog. Let us click on more options. Let's convert this table into a HTML instead of a blog. So now this is important. You need to add in this code, okay? This division class. And then whenever you open something, you need to close off something all the way to the bottom. Okay, and you need to remove this figure class because this is not a good number block. Let's remove this figure as well. And then let's update and refresh. And we can already see the data over here. And this is what we want. So the data is on the first row. We need to add all the data for each and every row you have on your table, which is a lot of work, but we'll do it anyway. So let me fast forward this. And don't worry, I'll leave this code for you to download in the description. And that's for your reference. Okay, so we are done with the data. So let us update this and refresh. And we can see all the data here. So this is the footer, but don't worry about that. I will fix this code for you to download. So the version you have downloaded, you will not see something like this. And I'll do that in a while. But now let me share with you how all this code works so that if you want to customize this, you can do it. Now, something very important is this data heading here. Because without this data heading, this generate press or all this data here, extra WP, block C, will not appear over here. And the reason is because over at the customizer, if you see at the bottom here, this is actually drawing out the content from the table to put it over here because of this data heading here. So whatever that you name this, this has to be consistent with this. So basically over here, we are configuring the mobile version of your website, anything smaller than 760 pixels. And on the next code, we're basically forcing the table to not be like a table anymore. And we want to display it as a block. As you can see over here, these are all blocks. And for this, we are basically hiding this row over here. So if we reduce it down to the mobile version, you won't see a row of just the headings because that is not needed. So this code hides the table heading. And then this table row, which means this entire box over here, the border is one pixels. And if you want to thicken this, maybe let's say three pixels. Let's publish this. Let us refresh this you see that the border here has taken. So it really depends on how you want to do this. You can even change the color of the border to something else. You just need the color code for it. So for example, if I want to change this color to something like a yellow color, this is the color code for yellow. And let me publish this and refresh. You'll see that the border will become yellow. And over here, it's actually telling you for each data column over here to behave like a row instead of a column. And within each column, we have a border of one pixel. If we change this to maybe three pixels, you can see that the border of each cell over here will thicken. 
So let me publish this and let me refresh. As you can see here, the border of each cell has taken. And then the padding left 50% basically means this white space over here. So let's say I remove this to 0%. All this data over here will be shift towards the end of the row. Let me publish this. And let me show you what I'm talking about. As you can see, all the data have been pushed towards the left. So that's why we need this to be 50% so that there'll be a white space of 50% here so that it pushes this to the middle. So let me publish this and refresh. You see that the data is back to the center line because it's 50%. And now this is the part where it talks about this space over here. It is just the top padding, which is there's a six pixel of space between the top border and the text. And then from the left, there is a six pixel gap between the left border and the text. And it's taking 45% of this white space over here. And if there are text on the white space, there'll be a no wrap. And then finally, this is the code that will draw out the data from your table and place it here. And then whatever text that is placed here, we have bolded. And that's what you are seeing here. So I hope this is easy for you to understand. And I hope you know how to play around with these codes. You need a tiny bit of understanding of CSS and HTML. And it takes a lot of work for you to put in all the data heading over here. So honestly, for the sake of saving time, I would not do something like this. I would just go with the default table block, which is the first method of creating a mobile responsive table because it's so much easier and by default is already mobile responsive. And all you need is just the two line of codes to make the table look nicer. But anyway, these are the two methods you can create a mobile responsive table. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Now I'm not a coder and I'm not the one who wrote this code. So let me give credits to the creators. I left links in the description where I found these codes. I personally took a lot of time sourcing these codes and putting them together to make the stuff mentioned in this tutorial work. So I really hope you would appreciate what I've put together and if you could smash that thumbs up button, it will really make my day. Thank you so much for sticking around. If you wish to learn how to create a professional homepage with WordPress with just the WordPress editor and no page builders for site speed purposes, then feel free to check out this video at the top right. And if you wish to find out which is the fastest WordPress team, then you can check out the video at the bottom. All the best to you, stay cool and stay safe.